What's up guys, it's Lefty here, back with another video. We ended up getting a win yesterday with that under four and a half first five innings in the Royals-White Sox game. Didn't start out great, I think the White Sox had something like four runs through two innings. We ended up getting something like 18 scoreless outs. Now yesterday was the first free member play video we did, but the official record is 7-1-1 one, and one for free member plays. They're posted daily in the uh, Discord community. And you can join the Betting Network Discord community for free. I'll put the link in the description. We have a real solid group of members. You know, they're all working together. Not just to find winning bets, but, you know, help each other improve overall sports betting IQ. And, you know, everyone always asks about picks, and I get it. People want to be given picks, but really the only way to make a difference in this or have long-term success is learning how to identify value on your own. And, you know, a lot of people think, well, what if I just buy picks or tail someone else that's good at betting and here's the flaw in that you know sports betting is so time sensitive and what i mean by that if you're waiting for someone to give you picks or even worse you're paying someone for picks by the time you get them and you bet them you're likely losing value or you would be if you know the picks you're following are good because odds makers adjust prices on the sharp side or the right sides of games so you know while you're waiting to be told what to bet you could be getting down money before the market adjusts or, you know, while the market opens, you know. I always say, just because I like a team or an over-under, it doesn't mean I still like that same play if the price or line has changed. You know, if I bet a baseball game over 9 and the total ends up moving to 9.5, there's a strong chance I wouldn't even bet it at 9.5. And, and for some people, they might be thinking, well, it's only a half a run, you know, but that half run makes a huge difference over the course of a full season. Um, you know, especially on the number nine, which is a key number in baseball, you know, a 4-4 tie game usually ends on nine. It's a very fi um, common final score. Um, always try to get on the right side of the number nine when you're betting over-unders and totals. Um, you know, consider that a lesson for the day, I guess. But um, let's get into the play of the day here. Um, I'll be honest, the pressure is really starting to build now on these free member plays. Um, we're going to take a look at the Oakland-Houston game at 8 o'clock. Uh, I'm not overthinking this one. You know, Houston has Oakland outmatched in pretty much all phases of the game. Uh, I really like this kid McCullers, and, you know, before the season started, he was a pitcher I planned on targeting, especially at home, but the way this Houston lineup's hitting right now, um, I'm not going to get many chances to back him at any discounted prices. Um, you know, Houston's minus 170 right now, and I'm going to be breaking a rule of mine in this one. I normally don't like taking home teams minus the one and a half runs because the home team gets one less at bat if they're winning, you know, going into the top of the ninth or, um, you know, especially if they're winning by one run going into the top of the ninth. A lot of things have to go your way to end up cashing that minus one and a half, you know, but I'm making an exception here because I, I really feel like it's going to be a lopsided score. Um, you know, the market looks good here. Um, we're looking at the run line or the spread column, 54% of bets. Um, I usually like to see it below 50%, but where the money's so high here at 82%, I kind of like that. Uh, whenever we see money over bets, you know, what we can interpret by that is the bets on Houston are big bets. And, you know, who normally bets big? It's the more informed bettors or sharper bettors. So uh, we can go ahead and check off the market analysis box here for this one. Um, and uh, I'm just hoping Oakland's bullpen continues to have issues. And, you know, I'll be surprised if um, we don't see at least six innings from McCullers. And I really think Houston's pen might only have to work, you know, a couple innings to get the win, uh, get the wind here. Um, actually, looking at the weather here in this game, too, um, I kind of like this. Uh, at Minute Maid Park, wind's blowing out hard. Um now, when the wind's blowing out, as long as they keep the uh, the roof open here, um, I like this. Um, you know, it's good for Houston. When you get the wind blowing out like that and you have guys like Springer and Reddick and Goriel all with launch angles in the high teens, you know, you can always expect some home runs. Um, so the weather kind of checks out for us there too. It's just an added factor that I like there. Uh, but like I said, I'm not overthinking this one too much. Houston's bats are raking right now, and they're seeing Mania for the second time in a week. So let's go ahead and take Houston on the run line, minus 1.5 at plus 110, and hope for a Houston blowout.
Um, good luck, and as always, may all the umps calls go your way.